Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths Subscriber Craft Review. And today's video is brought to you by a series of uh, annoying happenstance, uh, starting with the fact that this was not the next craft on the list. The next craft on the list was the A12 Viper by Revengeful Lobster, and it turns out I had the old uh, cheat-laden version of the thing with uh, lots of spin bot clipping and so I couldn't review it. He has sent me the fresh one, it's all good now. But uh, I've already prepared the review for the next thing down the list and this thing had an issue that needed to be fixed so it got delayed yet again. But here we are, this is the ACLN PCO2 Politicodon by Alex. Probably shouldn't say his full name over the internet. And what is this thing? It is a battleship. There's uh, yet another battleship on the list. There's People like to send me battleships back in the day simply because, well, if you're gonna have your thing reviewed, it might as well be the thing that uh, you put the most work into and want to... I've lost the words. What are the words? The words are what you want people to see on the internet. We'll go with that. Okay, so what is this thing? This is... Also meant to, meant to have been a twofer, because there's at least one other craft on the list that uh, is reasonably... That is also a big fat battleship, but I'm starting to think that really big ships... Like, this thing's huge, by the way. It is almost 20,000 blocks, and it's over 500k in material cost. This thing's big. There's a lot of things to talk about. I'm a little bit tired, and so is my throat, of doing big ships in doing two furs on them. So we're gonna try and keep that to like the smaller craft that actually have less, slightly less to talk about. So, although who knows, I might decide to go completely mad and do all of them in one video. That's probably not gonna happen, I'm joking. Anyway, so this thing, what is it all about? It's got lots of guns for a start, which uh, means it's uh, starting off well in my book. First up is that it's got long noodle barrels. Uh, this, these are 900, uh, not 900, these are, uh, 500mm, uh, hollow point high explosive frag shells, 8 meters long. So, very big, these are about as big as sensible advanced cannon shells can get. So, hollow point, lots of kinetic damage, lots of explosive damage, a uh, bit of frag, base bleeder, and they're reasonably fast as well. Reasonably. 381 meters per second is a uh, pretty decent shell speed. It's about... Honestly, I'd say it's about the average for advanced cannons. Anything below 300 is a bit slow. But in any case, it has uh, nine of those guns and three turrets. It has four of these things, so it has... What the heck am I looking at? It has... Well, eight. Uh, 150 millimeter frag guns right on the top here, so already we're starting well. Lots of frag with this thing. Uh, the cone angle is set to 45 degrees, a little bit lower than usual, so more of a more of a tighter spray, and these are quite slow, so 252 meters per second. These aren't really anti-aircraft guns, they're just secondary extra damage dealers, I guess. So there's those things. Lots of guns, lots of guns. It's got, and right here at the back, it does have an anti-aircraft gun. It's got this little what, uh, double 100mm turret that uh, has composite flak and timed frag with uh, 60 degrees. Basically, this, this one is slightly fast. 466 meters per second, already uh, Lousy flak damage, and like, more on that later. None of the shells actually are 100% efficient, but uh, we'll talk that when we talk about the ways that this thing isn't so good. We haven't even finished talking about what it's got yet. It's got also eight little auto cannons uh, situated on these little mounts up here. And I like, I like how people do this. Oh my goodness! No, shut up, internet. I'm not interested. Okay, so here we are. We are on this thing, and this is just an APS barrel in the middle there. And honestly, like, that's a good way to do it. Like, there's many ways to make uh, auto cannons look good in mounting them. And that's one of them. So, there's that. It also has a lot of missiles. Like, so much that I don't think Alex uh, update bothered updating this thing for the missile update, which is okay, fair enough. 
that uh, is gonna cost your ship, mate. But uh, it has 60 of these missiles, so variable thruster, bunch of fins, bunch of fuel tanks, TPG, target prediction guidance, bunch of frags, and what god, what fragments are these? 45 degree angle again, and a few explosives. So these things hurt when they hit, especially now, and there's a lot of them. And it has... Oh yeah, this is a fun thing it has. It has interceptor torpedoes. Which I always approve of because uh, I'm very fond of them. I did a whole, almost a whole video on them, actually. So, I believe that the... I have been told since the last video that the reason that you'd sometimes see frag warheads in weird places on both faction craft and just older craft, stuff that was made before the missile update, it's because any... Things say like uh, propellers or anything like that. Anything that can't go in these middle sections anymore, it just gets converted to frag warheads. So this thing probably was meant to have a secondary propeller, but it uh, doesn't. So that's a, that's a, that's a thing, I guess. Although, can you not have? You can't. You cannot. Nope. So in any case, so that's these things. These things get spat out when uh, it's hard to see down here because of all the foam. These things get spat out when uh, torpedoes get detected. We'll see if that is actually what happens. And missiles or torpedoes? Yeah, this is this craft was keep in mind made and submitted before the missile update because there's a setting on here which allows you to just go missiles or just torpedoes. So. Either something detected by munition warners or passive radar, or something detected by passive sonar, rather than both, because these things will be useless against uh, airborne missiles, obviously. So it has those, and it also has uh, quite a hefty uh, torpedo turret right in the front here. So we'll go. Whoop, whoop. So get in, and this is 11 very big. High explosive frag torpedoes, and what's it? Yep, there's that uh, angle again, 45 degrees. That, I don't know, it's not a bad angle, but uh, especially now considering how powerful missiles are, but 150 fragments, and essentially divide that by three, and that's the fragment average damage, because you can't get more than 60 fragments per missile. I'm pretty sure that's still the case. So these frags hurt a lot, and lots of explosive damage. These torpedoes will hurt like hell. But uh, hidden details there to be aware of. It also is reasonably well armored, so if we could hit the P e button, it has this kind of armoring. It has this crosshatch thing, which I have uh, talked smack on before, because for good reason. Because there's not a huge amount of reason to do it. I I am putting together and researching for an armor tutorial, by the way. So look out for that in the future. And uh, this is well, it's not. It's not bad, but uh, mainly it just acts as three layers of metal, and this cross hatching just stops big holes for kinetic holes for uh, kinetic shells and fragments and whatnot to slip through. That's all it does. So it's got three layers of metal. So that's about, if my math is correct, that's about an armor of rating of just below 40, about 37 point something for anything coming exactly at a right angle, which things never do, by the way. It's always arcing a little bit. In any case, so it has uh, three layers of metal, it has a wee air gap, and then more metal, and then a layer of stone behind that, so, and more stuff, just acting as reinforcement on the inside. So, nice big air gap in here, stops uh, heat from being a problem, but Hesh is a different story that we'll talk about. What else, what else, what else? And the deck armor is actually almost overkill, really, because it is a layer of metal with a layer of stone underneath it. And what this does, it's actually not a bad thing to do. Like, I, stone can be used for this, like wood as well. Is what This is essentially a Faraday cage, assuming I'm remembering what a Faraday cage is properly. And what this is, is that you have a conductive material, like metal or alloy, uh, on the outside here, and you have s something non-conductive, like stone or wood, on the inside, or even glass. Use stone or wood, glass sucks. And what this means is that if you get an EMP jolt on the outside, it runs 
all around the outside of a craft rather than actually flowing inwards to where you're likely to have EMP vulnerable systems in. So that's quite so that is a good move. Stone is actually uh, one of the best materials for armor because simply because its uh, health to cost ratio is so very very good. Like it's uh, about eight materials for a stone beam, and that's 1,800 health. Metal has higher health, but it's also way more expensive. I actually came up with a formula for that just the other day, which will be in the army tutorial. I should stop plugging other videos while I'm doing this one. God, all the way. What are you like, even? So it's got thick deck armor, thick side armor, and it also has Deadly Blade Steering. So that's the only reason I assume that's there. So if we go look at these, yep. That uh, resets it. That is Insta Reverse Spin Block and Insta Spin. And if you do that, we should be turning... Yep. We're turning to the left. Very nice. Like, Deadly Blade Steering is something that is a little bit... Uh, it's hard to... it's hard to do. Also, uh, Deadly Blade Clipping is a thing right here. I personally don't mind it because it still takes up uh, the exact same amount of space as like a whole bunch of Deadly Blades which don't clip with each other. Like, spin blocks are my main worry. So this is within the rules, barely, although... Well, no, 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 not barely. It just kind of is because... One, two, three... Doo -doo -doo. It's still taking up... whatever, I'm rambling now. That, that's fine, that is not breaking the rules. It just, most most people are correct in that it looks really ugly. But thankfully, it's on the inside of the ship and you can't see it. Uh, what else, what else? This thing has uh, PID is controlling basically everything, really. And by everything, I mean everything to do with how it moves and stays in the water. And I know some people, some purists, uh, hate the idea of craft that rely on PIDs to stay above the water. So, yeah, you'll hate this because there's lots of PIDs, there's general purpose roll, altitude, and pitch, and there's also one controlling the hydrofoils. So there's a whole bunch of hydrofoils you can see here along the sides. That's also controlling the altitude. Although, yeah, that's, uh, that, uh, that's what it's doing. So, also, while we're down here, do, 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 there's, this craft is quite clever in taking that... Control, taking control. The uh, AI is ACB controlled, so it's got two different AIs for when it's in combat and out. So, to start off with, this one is the out of combat AI. Well, it's named non combat system right there. So, it's got no transmitters on it, it doesn't control anything. And if there's no enemies around, this is the one that activates, and that's the naval AI, and it's uh, set to. What is that? Where is the control block for it? Because it's set to control fleet move. Board. It is hard coded to fleet move. And I can't. I don't know where the ACB that does that is. So, do, do, do. There's that. And there's. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. And anyway, here's the combat AI because it's got target preservation and aerial AI. And. I just realized how hungry I am, damn it. So this thing uses an aerial AI for combat, for combat, which is, I salute you for Alex, because goodness knows, uh, I hate the aerial AI, and so do m many people. So what this basically is, basically I've seen this in tournaments before, is like apparently aerial AI actually works better most of the time for ships than it does for aircraft, simply because, I know, you are, if you're off even a little bit, uh, with uh, aircraft, they can fly into space or n nosedive into the water. A PID-controlled ship doesn't have that problem, so you have all this, and it also means that uh, the thrusters on the side here, which are, for one, uh, helping to keep this thing stable, I'm assuming these things are PID-controlled, these things are also helping it steer. Why did it just... Okay, yeah, it's really heavy, so it kind of plonked into the water. Right. So, the, yeah, this thing actually has the brains of a plane. Which, uh, considering this game, is not very good brains. So, never mind. Uh, what else? What else? It has got a whopping big lamp system and a whopping big engine. So where is the whopping big lamp system? I want to see it. I want to see it. There it is. It's right here. So, how strong is this lamp system? Well, we'll need to go find a lamb's node. Lots of surge protectors in the superstructure. Like, superstructure is kind of 
is a wee bit meh, because, well, I'm hardly one to judge the super truck. Where the hell are the lambs notes? Oh yeah, they're way the heck over here. And that's a one minus point. This thing is quite fast. It's scuttling along at around 21 meters per second. And so, what is this? So, the pulse damage is about 500, which is... 500 and about 22 AP, which is still pretty good, even after the big lambs nerf. Blows things uh, out of the air quite handily. And the range is 500 meters, which is less good. I find it it's rare that you want... Uh, these days, I find that if you want uh, a lamb system to be effective, unless you're specifically wanting it to counter big APS shells, it's better to turn the range down a bit, because it only does 70% damage at 500 meters, so you're wasting power by doing that otherwise. Or not, the more the quicker you start shooting at incoming shells, the more likely they will to blow up before they hit you, so there's that. And it's got a big powerful engine. I think, I'm not sure what kind of engine they're running in there. It's probably off the UFEP, if uh, I, I would guess. This looks like... I'm not sure what this says. It looks like uh, four different... It, these are four separate engines kind of uh, smashed together a little bit. Don't know if this is a prefab somewhere where Alex uh, made it himself. Oh no, this is a... Uh, uh, yeah. Hmm. I, I don't even know. Fuel engines are really not my specialty. I don't really bother making them. Uh, there's... I get all my engines off the workshop because it's easier. In any case, uh, what else, what else, what else? It also has shields. This thing has shields, it has big engines for re- Stop dipping into the water. You might make it messing with my steez. Anyway, so reasonably, well, not that strong. These are about average shields, about 3.7 strength, set to reflect. Uh, there's no control block turning them off out of combat by the way, which makes it easy to demonstrate them, but uh, also means they're eating lots of fuel. And this thing has shields aplenty, and when I first looked at this, I thought, like, hmm, not double-layered. That's not good. It turns out they are double-layered. They're very tightly packed. This is actually reasonably good uh, shield Tetris, for lack of a better word. Apparently, it is a bit of a problem if they intersect too much, because the game can only process shells hitting one shield at a time. So, say... It's hard to see, actually. So about... Eh. Where is that? There's no real point. They're not really touching at all, actually. That's impressive. And it's right here, just... Just... Just sneaking through here. Which is why I hate shields, because I'm very bad at... Ah, so, like, here, for instance, when they cross here, if a shell hits this point where the box is, it usually only processes one shield at a time, so this doesn't count as double layering, apparently. Which I find tremendously annoying, and it's yet another reason why I hate shields, and why the shield update and overhaul cannot come soon enough, because frankly, well, they suck, they suck. If you like the way they work now, well, good on you, all the more power to you, but I think they suck, and I'm not the only one. So, what else, what else? Ah, yes, the ammunition! And there's mystery ammu- I'm just gonna turn these things. To be invisible. Because... Either- Oh, there it is. So, the ammunition is all in the rear. And so, a bunch of ammo here, and a bunch of ammo here. So, aim point spoofing, like... This is pretty standard practice, is to put the ammunition in the rear of a ship. Because enemy craft try to lead the target, so they hit. And if you turn during it, you're not there when the shell lands, and they miss. So, pretty standard, and the ship is fast enough to for that to be somewhat effective. So, there's the good points of this thing. It's a big... Where? 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 Where are you? Come on. You're there. Turn off my spotlight. And you're down under the water again. So now we'll get to uh, what this craft could do better. Because there's a few things. Like, for one thing, you'll notice that uh, it has surge protectors here, there, and everywhere, but uh, there's a few things that um, are not EMP defended at all. The shields and munition warners in particular, they are undefended. They're touching bare metal, and there's no surge protectors kind of anywhere near them. 
A lot of them are in the superstructure, and these surge protectors are right next to things they should be defending, which apparently isn't a good idea, because what can happen is that, say, right here, say an uh, EMP round hits here, what happens is that surge protectors will pull them from quite a distance away, so what'll happen here is it'll whoop, and it will wiggle its way up here, and it will uh, get to a surge protector, which means it'll pass through these vulnerable components right here. Because if you look here, uh, laser munition, uh, these uh, lambs knobs, laser nipples, eh -eh, are EMP, sus sus no, EMP susceptible, so you actually don't want surge protectors near them. You want them away from them to pull EMP surges like in a different direction. Same thing for AI, same thing for shields, and that's a pretty big flaw right there, particularly with things that uh, EMP missile swarms or particle cannons or even EMP cram or APS. It's uh, something to worry about. It also has, and I've mentioned this before with Hesh, this air gap right here, this is good for heat defense because it stops big heat shells from penetrating right into the craft and wrecking the engines and other things. This gap is perfect for Hesh because it has no spall liner at all and there's vulnerable things in here like shields and hydrofoils and even ammunition processes as well. What will happen here is that a Hesh shell will thump on the outside here, assuming it gets the shields, which they do with annoying frequency, and it will cause spalling in here, and Hesh spalling fragments have doubled the armor penetration of the whatever block they spawn from. So metal blocks have an armor of 15, which means if that spalling fragments that come off them have armor penetration of 30, so they do full damage to metal. Which means that uh, this inner layer of metal will get shredded pretty quickly, and then the layer of stone here will also go, and then there's hash fragments right in the middle of the craft, which is not good. So to fix this, like, you would basically just do something like this. You would stick wooden slopes in here. Something like that, because there's still an air gap now, and admittedly, this wasn't a feature when this craft was first built. In fact, I don't think Hesh was as ridiculously powerful as it is as it is now. But this counts as an air gap, so if something thumps there, the fragments that'll come off will be wood, which will have an AP of 6, and will do almost nothing against this metal. Again, armor tutorial coming soon, we'll talk about that. So no spore liner, that's a bit of a problem, and speaking of APS related stuff, I'm also, I'm kind of annoyed that you can't get this thing to stop moving. That would be... Turning, turning off. Ah! Turning, turning off. That would be very nice, but unfortunately, like, some craft are just built like that. So, if we have a Heidi peek inside here, you'll see that the main guns... This is reasonably space-efficient Tetris. But, you'll see here that... Let me see. Are these things armored on the inside? They are not by the looks of it. That's one floor. It's, it's a free air gap if you armor your turrets, guys. So there, a little bit of armor only on the front. I would armor all the way around if I were you, just as insurance. Just in case the turret gets knocked out, it ends up pointing away from the enemy. It's a smart move. And, yep, no armor on the top. That's bad. And also, this, uh, this I know will give uh, some people headaches, is that this is a pure autoloader. APS system. There's no clips in here. And there's advantages to doing that. The Tetris is much easier to do, and if a gun doesn't fire particularly quickly, it's not a real problem. And if it doesn't have many loaders, that's okay. This is less ideal because it is a very expensive. See, auto loader, see, even here. So, auto loader 8 meters long is about 160 materials. A clip is 40. It is so much cheaper. And it's also an ammunition hog, so if I do this, pull it out of play, and then I pull it into play, you will notice that, whoops, all the ammo's gone. Where'd it go? 
The thing with using only autoloaders is that they don't hold ammo between combat and out of combat. And also just, like, out of play. They don't hold ammo long term, whereas clips do. Which means that immediately on the start of combat, what you have is that you run out of ammunition almost completely. And in fact, that's linked to a problem with this gun here is because there's too much, too many autoloaders to the point where this uh, middle gun here has no shells loaded when it first spawns in because there's too many autoloaders and not enough ammunition for all of them. So it will eventually load, but it'll take a while, and that's not good. It means one of the... a big, expensive triple gun is not doing anything for however long it takes to load in combat. It's uh, not good. And there's also... Speaking of excess, and like, excessive anything is something to work off and building, work with when building this game, because it's easy to go overboard. There's a lot of air pumps in here, and all of these things are in very, very tiny air spaces, to the point that it is useless. It is pretty much entirely useless, because, like, this one is almost completely enclosed. It's got, like, four cubic meters of air to work with. And it really isn't doing anything for buoyancy. If this didn't have a PID, it would sink like a rock. So, this is just excessive and just upping block count. It's pretty useless. It does look a little quite interesting when you view it in this x-ray mode, but... Yeah, like, do not do this. This is completely worthless. Air pumps and helium pumps are really only any good in large spaces, and only when... There's just one of them. There's absolutely no point in putting more than one pump in a space. So, if you see here, Alex has done that exact thing, in that there's multiple pumps in a space, so... I think he did he? No, he didn't. He didn't do that. Okay. Might be he didn't do that, it's just hard to see in here because it's so cramped. This is... yeah, this... okay, this is a reasonable sized air gap, but... Yeah, I wouldn't bother doing this. You will actually get better buoyancy and better armor just by sticking wood slopes in here. Also better for your computer. Less tiny blocks to handle. And there's also, I'm talking about protection, armor is kind of pointless if you have exposed bits. And this thing has exposed props all over the place. So exposed props over there. I'm in the water. Exposed props right in the middle. Lots of exposed props. Uh, never use small propellers either. Like, if you're on a, on a ship this big, make him big propellers. Just, you might as well. And over there, more propellers exposed. Highly exposed propellers on the back. I'm finding out, and I've repeatedly found out the hard way, that you really do not want either turning props or propulsion props to be exposed like this. Because it's too... Especially since this... Uh, craft has ammo in the rear, it lit pretty much uh, everything will be shooting at its backside, which means that these props are at risk. So you don't want them exposed like this. It's good staggering, I have to admit, because like they're fitted, they're fitted uh, overlapping like this. It's a very space efficient way to have props. However, like I tend to find the propellers are best uh, well, either put a roof over the top of them, have a little compartment just for them, sink them into the hull, or space them out on the underside of the craft. In fact, I have a prefab which does just that. It's a, it's ugly as hell, I will admit. So if we do that, it just, well, it looks like this. So just on the underside of the craft. Boop, 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 boop. So it looks something like that, and it's flush with the underside, and it's nice and safe. Damn it. And oh, go away. Don't want you yet. Okay. So lots of exposed props. And on the guns again. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth a little bit. On the main guns, you will notice that these gun that these barrels look a little bit different. That is because they are heavy barrels. This is another thing that is excessive, because these things are very expensive, and they're very heavy. A one meter heavy barrel is a weight of 200. That is almost as heavy as lead. In fact, it is as heavy as lead. So you're basically strapped wooden 
Well, no, what am I saying? You've strapped lead poles to your guns. And this completely ruins the elevation of these things. So, if we go over there and we try and aim up as much as possible, it is just so slow, the elevation speed. This uh, craft tends to struggle with uh, anything that is above a certain altitude, simply because those guns take such a long time to aim upwards. Exposed mantlets too, that's not good. So really, the way you want to use heavy barrels is, well... Pretend this is... I don't know. Pretend this wooden block is the firing piece. So here we have... Here we have the barrels, and ideally what you want to do is have the heavy barrel right here. So right there, right at the base of the thing, so something like that. And that's it. The rest of it should probably be just regular barrels like this, because this preserves a degree of uh, elevation speed, but it also means that your entire barrel can't get completely blown off. So even a 4 meter barrel is better than nothing. So that's from what I understand heavy barrels are good for. They are not intended to replace regular barrels entirely, they're too expensive, they're too heavy, they weigh the whole thing down. So, too many heavy barrels. Blah, 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 blah. So, up here on top, we have something that almost made me uh, uh, disqualify this craft as well, saying this is spin block shenanigans, get out of here. There's a wee turret here, and it is uh, clipped with the actual, what do you call it, the hull of the ship, to, and I really, I think that's just to hide. Uh, the, what the hell? Is this a mimic? What am I looking at? What am I looking at? Yo. Ah. Okay, this thing has mimics. I didn't actually know that. So if we go here, if we save here, what are we left with? We're left with something like this. I'm getting distracted. What are we talking about? Okay, so we have this thing up here. Firstly, this is on a turret that can't move, so if we go here... That turret is stuck. It, uh, it is jammed with a block somewhere in it and cannot move. And the second thing is, this is a 360 camera on here. The only darn thing these things are good for is seeing in 360 degrees in all four directions. It's blocked backwards by this uh, wireless transmitter here. And that is... Ooh, metal plate there. This defies the point of having something like this. You might as well just have 90 degree cameras if you're going to block off one side of it anyway. So that's a bit of a flaw right there. And clip turret on Mars. And this is... I think this is just a mistake, this turret. So I'm going to let it go for that. Because it clearly it doesn't work very well, frankly. So not very cheaty. And getting back to the question of weapons and ammo, this craft has a lot of weapons, and all of them are very ammo-hungry. The... I should mention, yeah, these turrets here, these uh, secondary guns, they're also autoloader only, so these eat up a lot of ammo as well. All the main guns are, and the missiles and torpedoes are not designed with the missile update in mind. Because there's a lot of... 60 missiles is ridiculous numbers of missiles these days. You... It is complete overkill, and... This thing has 15... Roughly 1,500 uh, ammunition in total. Each one of these missiles costs 700, and times that by 60. So, that's already... If my math is even remotely correct, that's already more ammunition than this craft has in total. So... That's uh, not good, and there's still torpedoes and counter torpedoes and stuff, and this thing is leaning like crazy. Huh. This thing does not want to stay in the water. Gee Whoa. Whoa, easy there, girl. Oh boy. And also, the, you will know, might notice there's a constant message up on the, on the upper left that uh, this thing has blocked exhaust. I do not know where they are. And I don't want to find out, because this is a engine Tetris nightmare, but it's blocked. And always, you must pay attention to that uh, little notification, because it usually means there's something important. And that, wait, 
Wait, wait, wait, wait, wait. I think I know what it might be. So, right here. Right here is the exhaust for everything. Huh. Okay. There's a not there's no bonus. Oh no no no. So that bit's fine. So whatever is going wrong is deep inside uh, the engine and good luck Alex for finding it because I couldn't find it and I don't want to keep looking. So uh, what else? What else? So we've mentioned that this thing has quite a lot of shields. Let's just show them again. Oh my goodness, I'm hungry. Why am I so hungry? Ugh, looking at big ships makes me hungry because it reminds me of potato salad. What am I even saying? See, my brain's going. So, superstructure's covered. The whole line is covered. That's all very good. Uh, from above, the turrets aren't covered. And this is something very common in craft. And goodness knows I've done that myself. Oh, actually, this... Uh, Top turret right here looks like it is covered. Hello. Hello. Well, it is covered a little bit, and it's more covering the hull than the turret itself. This is a problem for things that shoot down on you, or plunging fire, which tends to happen more often than not. Like, I know, the only reason I tend not to cover my turrets on my craft, such as they are, there's not many fully functional ones at the moment, is because I hate shields, and if I can get away with not using them, I try. But honestly, if I'm being completely honest with myself and others, you do need to shield your turrets. Like, looking at the tier of the Steel Striders, it really is worth it to shield your decks. It just, it stops so much stuff from wrecking your guns. Like, especially early in the fight, it just stops things from shearing barrels off and blowing up firing pieces. Which on this ship's quite important because the mantlets are exposed. And although I keep building craft like that so because I like the way it looks, from a purely pragmatic point of view, it's better not to do this, especially if uh, your turret cap is tall enough to cover them anyway. So that is something to consider. You might you hide your firing pieces and mantlets. They're tough, but you do not want them like damaged or destroyed ever. Because they're your, your main weapons. And speaking of protection, so, mentioned before, this thing has ammo in the rear, and that is good. Stop moving around and sinking. Well, stop having shields. Just stop, Politicode. Stop, Politicodon. Just stop. You go ahead and stop that right now. So, thinking about how the. A oh my goodness, come on. Or. Uh, the ship's as laggy as balls. Probably on, am not going to combat test this thing. My computer's burning up as it is. So, this thing has ammo in the rear. That's good. Because it's uh, aimpoint spoofing. Uh, hard to hit back here. Except, look what it's near to. And look what it is near to. And what it's near to. So with aimpoint spoofing, the idea is that you put things like AI and ammo in places that are either hard to hit at all or hard to get to. So either in like annoying parts of the ship that move around a lot and are hard to hit or behind lots and lots of armor. So this ship's kind of done both because it's got layers of metal and stone and heavy armor and whatnot here. And it's like, it's right at the back, I did. But look what's right next to it and exposed. What you have is this volatile little frag flat gun here. And you have 60 very, very expensive missiles. It's 200 materials per gantry. That is a lot. And although it is reasonably durable, health of 300, armor of 20 per each, you do not want shells landing near them, particularly if they're big APS or cram shells or even like laser guided missiles or something. These like missiles are highly at risk here. So also I don't think this thing has laser defense either, but uh, that's that's a different kettle of fish. Before, does it have any smoke? Come on. Come on, show me the good. I don't think it does. It doesn't have lint. That's, well, that's a, something that occurred to me right now, is that, uh, uh, oh, my stomach, oh, I need to eat a thing, I could eat. 
I could eat a real-life Polychicodon, by the way, which is a marine... Extinct marine reptile. I would eat a fossil right now. Focus, border wise. Almost there. So... This is possibly the most, uh, biggest whoopsie right here, is that the thing is... When you have aimpoint spoofing, you must keep the ammo well away from anything you don't want shot at. So, this is why when I put uh, ammo barrels at the rear of a ship, I tend to put the propellers underneath it rather than at the back. And when I have uh, ammo keels, which is quite an effective way to do that. I keep going back and forth over it, but honestly, I think it works really well. It's just... Putting the ammunition well below the waterline and behind lots of armor works a treat, especially for larger craft. Um, what tends to happen is that the ship is quite tall, so the deck is well away from the bits that uh, enemy ships are shooting at. This is a recipe for destroyed missiles. So, what's I don't know, I don't know what what can we throw at this thing that'll really test it? I know an eerie. Oh god. Oh, hungry. Oh, my lunch was huge. Why is this happening? Sorry, Alex. Ah, my head feels weird. Oh, and that's a, that's why you don't uh, have explosive missiles fire like that. When one of them gets destroyed, they all get destroyed. Actually, why did I pick the Eerie for this? Actually, the Polychicodon is probably going to win this simply because it's got frag guns. It is, however, capsizing slightly. It's... Whoa, it's going right over. Whoa, that's a design flaw. Oh, dear. Yep. So, that is a problem right there. I haven't done it any favors. Oh, dear. The land is gone. Oh, dear. That's not good. Oh, boy. And, oh, looks like, yep, the torpedoes don't have altitude settings on them. Oh, dear. It's all gone wrong. Ah! I'm so... I'm gonna start eating my notes at any right now. So, in any case, that's uh, the Polychicodon. It's big, ambitious ship, so we salute you, Alex, for doing that. And, oh, boy. So, see, that's exactly the problem. The Erie was aiming for ammo barrels, and it got that uh, frag gun right there as a bonus. And it's going to blow up those missiles very soon. And fast shells are a good idea when uh, fighting the Eerie. Admittedly, I spawned the Eerie behind it, which is uh, not very fair of me. Also, yeah, also turret restrictions. Oh, there's lots of things. Alex, you've got work to do. Well, only if you want to, really. Goodness knows, like, uh, you are free to ignore me if you like. Or start or build a new ship. That's always fun. So in any case, thank you all so much for watching. Thanks, Alex, for sending me this craft. It's been uh, sitting in folder for quite a while. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Subscribe, craft, review. Oh, look at that. She's, uh, she's all upright again. Farewell.